Today, we're learning phrases that are advanced. And I promise you, your English teacher did not teach you these in the classroom. I'm sorry if you haven't learned them before, but today's phrases will help you converse with American English speakers and they'll help you understand English dialogue as well. Let's get started. Some of these phrases are formal. Some of them are more informal slang phrases, but they're all advanced and they will all help your English vocabulary. Many times in English, instead of saying, handle this in your own way, people will say, do your thing. Do your thing, Tom. So this phrase is used really informally just to say, yeah, just do it the way that you want to do. Don't let me interrupt you. Oftentimes, if someone is just wanting to watch what you're doing, they don't want to interact and they don't want to interfere. Maybe you are cooking something in a certain way and they say, oh, I don't want to help. I don't want to get involved. I'm just watching. I'm trying to learn. They'll say, oh, do your thing. I'm just watching. So this phrase, do your thing, it's really informal and you wouldn't necessarily be able to guess exactly what it means. But now you know if someone says, oh, just do your thing. It means proceed, don't stop, don't let me interrupt or interfere. Instead of saying, let's compete against each other, English speakers will say, let's go head to head. You want to go head to head with me. So when someone says, let's go head to head, that means let's have a competition. Let's go against each other. Oftentimes, if you are trying to do something really fast, let's say one person is playing a video game and you are playing the same video game. Now, if you two want to compete, instead of saying, let's compete or let's go against each other, you'll say, let's go head to head. And that means let's compete directly against one another to see who is better. So oftentimes, if you want to see who is better at something, they'll say, I want to see you two go head to head. That means compete against one another in the same competition or the same game. In really casual conversations, someone might say to you, hey, let's link up soon. This very informal phrase, to link up, it means to get together or to hang out for a bit. Maybe you have an old group of friends and you guys have been trying to arrange a meeting or a get together. You can say, hey, let's text each other and try to link up sometime next week. This means we're all going to try to meet at the same place. It's the exact same as saying get together. But again, it's very informal and very casual to say, oh, do you want to link up sometime next week? And this is a phrase that we use with a friend that just means let's get together at a certain time to link up. You may have previously learned in English, you know, we say, I arrived late at the meeting. Now in English, oftentimes, even formally, people will say, I showed up at the meeting late. Hopefully you weren't late. Hopefully I wasn't late. But just for this example, it is talking about the time that someone arrives or gets to a place, the time that they show up. So if something shows up, it literally means to appear, but we often use it instead of saying we arrived. What time did you show up at the party last night? This means what time did you arrive at the party? Or if someone is either not showing up or showing up, it means they have not arrived, they did not come at all or they showed up last night. I mean, they came. It's not a specific time. It just means that they were there. Let's say you are trying to exercise and work out and be more healthy. You might say, I haven't showed up at my gym in so long. This means you haven't actually gone or arrived to your gym in a long time. And you can say, I need to start showing up at the gym more often, meaning you need to actually go there and exercise and show up more often. So when we say someone is always showing up, it's a really informal kind of idiom phrase that means that they consistently do something. They're always showing up at the gym. They're always showing up on time. This means they do it consistently. They are always arriving or being at a place. What do you mean you show up? I show up. This next phrase is such a useful one in English. The phrase is to each their own. To each their own stuff. Let me give you some context about how to use this phrase. So maybe you have a friend and she spends a lot of money on purses, handbags. Maybe she buys a very, very expensive handbag for thousands of dollars. And your other friend says, do you like that handbag? And you say, well, personally, I would never spend 
thousands of dollars on a handbag or purse, but to each their own. This phrase, to each their own, it just means that everyone is entitled to their own opinions and everyone is entitled to do what they want to do to make themselves happy. You can just even use this just to say like, don't worry about my opinion. If you're asking for my opinion, that's fine, but I don't want to offend you. Like, if you don't like it this way, that's okay. So, for instance, someone might ask you, do you like hot coffee? You'll say, personally, I can't stand hot coffee. I like cold coffee, iced coffee, but to each their own. That means it's just my personal preference. Everybody can have their opinion. It does not matter to me, but this is just what I like. So we can use this phrase to each their own just to mean everyone can have their own opinion. Don't take mine personally and don't be offended by my opinion. Do you know what it means to jump in and do something or join something? Good. Jump in. So we use this phrase to jump in to mean that someone can become involved very quickly, either doing something or helping with something or just contributing in some way. There's a few different ways that we can use this useful phrase. Maybe you see your friend struggling to lift a heavy box and you say, oh, let me jump in and help you real quick. This means they didn't ask you for help and you weren't really planning on helping, but since you're there, you're just going to enter and help them very quickly. You're going to jump in and help. Now, in a more formal context, maybe you are in school or in a business meeting, whoever is leading the discussion might say anyone can jump in and make a comment or anyone can feel free to jump in and share their opinion. This means they don't have to be formally raising their hand or waiting for a time when the table is open to discussion. They can just comment at any time it feels natural like, actually, I think this plan is not going to work or, you know, you can jump in and just share any sort of opinion or advice that you have. You might say, feel free to jump in if you have any suggestions about this plan. This just means don't feel afraid to share your comments or start talking while I'm talking. When someone is going to be in charge and in control of something, they are going to take over. Okay, Serge, take over. Take over. So this phrasal verb, it really just means that someone is now in control of something. And we use this so frequently in English. Let's talk about all the different ways that you can use the phrasal verb take over. So if you're passing on your responsibilities to someone, maybe you're at work and you'll say that your coworker Debbie is going to take over some of your responsibilities or some of your jobs. So those jobs are going to be hers now. She is in charge of them. She is going to take over. Or maybe you're in a meeting and you're the one leading the meeting and speaking and you say, actually, Debbie is going to take over the meeting now. This means that Debbie is going to be in charge and all the focus is going to shift to her. Oftentimes, when we are on a long road trip driving somewhere and we are tired of driving, we might ask our partner or our companion, hey, would you mind taking over driving at the next stop? This means, would it be your turn? You'll be in charge of driving. We can also offer to take over sometimes too if someone needs a break from a job or a task. Maybe you have children and your husband or your wife is really tired and you can say, I'll take over with the kids right now. This means you'll take over all the responsibilities. It's just assume that the person would know what you're taking over when you say, I'll take over with the kids right now. This means I'll play with the kids, I'll watch the kids, whatever. I'll take over so that you can rest. So it's just offering to be in charge or to take a responsibility over to yourself. This next phrase, to lay down the law, it's one of those phrases that sounds really serious, but we kind of use it in a less serious, joking manner. For instance, if we want to say that someone went from being, you know, less strict to being very firm and strict about the rules, we can say that they are really laying down the law. My boss didn't used to care if I was late, but now if I'm even a minute late, I get in trouble. They are really laying down the law. That means they're being very strict and firm about the rules. You can say if you are in charge of people at work or if you're a parent or if you're a teacher, I really have to lay down the law. This means you have to be very strict. And again, it, it is like being serious. You are saying that you need to be strict and firm, but it's kind of giving a warning if you say I'm going to lay down the law that you are going to be strict. So it's not super serious and 
stern and mean to say. It's just describing the fact that you have to go from being very relaxed to very strict and firm with the rules. I'm going to lay down the law. You better lay down the law. Instead of saying that you did something difficult, a phrase that you can use, you can say, I really pulled it off. She'll pull it off. So to pull something off. We use this phrase when you are successful in completing something very difficult or you just didn't expect that you were able to do something. If you have a test in school and you did not study at all, but somehow you were able to pull off an A, you would have pulled off a really difficult thing to do because typically people have to study a lot of hours to do well on a test in school. I think about the old movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off. If you haven't seen this classic American movie, you definitely should watch it. It is still funny to this day. But basically, the main character, Ferris Bueller, played by Matthew Broderick, he pulls off having this epic day where he skips school and he doesn't get in trouble with his parents and he kind of tricks the principal into, you know, basically thinking that he's sick all day. So he really pulled off a difficult thing to do in this movie. So again, check out the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off if you've never seen it. It's pretty funny and it would be a good one to practice listening to English too. Learning English is hard, but I'm sure I don't have to tell you. Okay, this phrase you can say, I don't have to tell you or you don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell me. It means that you understand the complaint or the difficulty that is being spoken about. For instance, let's say you go to work every day and you fight traffic. You have to drive in a lot of traffic. And your friend says to you, oh my gosh, traffic is so bad. You can say, you don't have to tell me. I drive to work every single morning in traffic. So this just means that I have the same complaint and I have experienced it so much that you don't even have to tell me about your complaint because I understand it. So it's not being ruined to say this to someone. It just means that you really understand their complaint. You share the same difficulty or struggle that they're having. So in this example, if you're saying something that you know someone else has also experienced that's a difficulty, for instance, learning English is hard. I'm sure I don't have to tell you. You're saying this phrase, I don't have to tell you, because you would know whoever's listening to you has experienced this difficulty. If someone tells me that they feel like they never have any free time, I will tell them, you don't have to tell me I have three kids. This just means that I feel very busy as well. I also don't feel like I have free time. Or, you know, maybe in English, we talk a lot how we're tired all the time. I'm sure this is a really common thing that anyone in the world talks about. Maybe your friend is also tired, you know, they're very busy, and you say, oh, this has been a long week, I'm so tired, but I'm sure I don't have to tell you. This means that you understand your friend has a busy life as well, or maybe they have a really demanding job that also makes them very tired, so you don't have to tell them. When you're studying English, even if it's hard, don't give up. Never! gives up. So to give up is an important phrase to know in English. It means that you are stopping doing something because you think it's too hard, you think you can't do it, or you are kind of surrendering. Sometimes when someone asks a difficult question, like a trivia question, like, do you know the largest country in the world? And the person thinks to themselves, hmm, and they just don't know the answer, they'll say, I give up. This means that they, even though they thought about it, they just don't know the answer. Or maybe someone asks a riddle, and again, you just can't figure out the correct answer. You've guessed a few times, you'll say, I give up. Can you tell me the answer? This means I'm stopping. I'm not putting any more effort into this. You could also say you are going to give up something. This typically means you're going to give up a habit or an action that you do. For instance, maybe you feel like you are shopping too much. You can say, I'm going to give up shopping until the end of the year and not buy any new clothes. So this just means you're going to stop that habit. Oftentimes we use this phrase, we're going to give up smoking, we're going to give up drinking. 
to mean that we are going to try to stop and do these things. So those are two really common ways that we use the phrase to give up. Have you ever heard of someone making a mistake, like a husband, you know, makes a mistake, maybe he forgets his wife's birthday, and to make up for it, he buys her flowers the next day. So this phrase, to make up for something, it means you're going to compensate for a mistake that you have made. Make up for one. A teacher might say to the class, I know that this week has been very boring because we've had a lot of tests. So to make up for that, we are going to play a game today. This just means that they are going to try to make the day fun, kind of as an apology for having a boring week at school. You can also make up for a fault or shortcoming that you have. For instance, if you are late to work, you might say, I'm going to make it up by staying late today. So you're giving extra time to the workday since you were late in the morning. To make up for being short, a lot of people wear tall shoes. This just means that they view being short as a shortcoming or a fault of theirs. So they try to make up for it by wearing shoes that make them taller. When you tell someone to look into something, you're telling them to investigate a topic or kind of examine something. For instance, right now I'm kind of looking into buying a new car. So I'm looking at cars, I'm researching them, I'm deciding if a minivan would be good since I have three kids or if I should get an even bigger car because, you know, I have a stroller that I bring for my really young kids. So I'm just looking into it. That just means I'm researching whether I want a car that is, you know, fitting all these different things. I'm researching. If you want to suggest that someone should research an idea, you can say you should look into this. Maybe you have a friend that is a really good singer. You could say, have you ever looked into joining a band? That means, you know, they should sing with other people that play instruments. You can say to them, you should look into being a singer. You're so good. This means you can kind of research opportunities. You should see if it's something that you could do because you're good at it. In the year of 2024, you need to know the phrase to keep someone in the loop. I still prefer to keep humans in the loop. This phrase is used in corporate America all the time to just say, I'm going to keep you updated on what's going on. For instance, if you are working with someone on a project, you can say to them, just make sure you keep me in the loop on what our client says. This means keep me updated. Don't find out what the client says and then not tell me. I need to be informed on all the information regarding this project. To keep someone in the loop means to keep them updated. A really encouraging phrase that we can use to tell someone to try something, even if they've never done it before, is we can say to them, give it a shot. I'll, I'll give that a shot. Give it a shot. So to give something a shot means to attempt it or to try it often for the first time. I've never cooked lamb at home before. It's just something I've never tried but I would really like to give it a shot. This means I would like to try to do it. I would like to try to do it good and make the food taste good as well. Have you ever cooked lamb before? Should I give it a shot? Let me know any tips in the comments. A really harsh phrase that we use to say that we are going to end or discontinue something is we say we are going to pull the plug. Or I'm pulling the plug. So in theory, you know, if you had a television on and you just pulled the plug out, it would completely stop right away. Oftentimes, this phrase is again used in the workplace or in business settings. If you pull the plug on the project, it just means that the project is not going very well and you're going to stop it immediately and maybe try to do something else eventually, but you're just stopping right now. Or maybe you were planning an event outside, but you had to pull the plug on it because the weather was just too bad. A phrase that almost means the opposite of pulling the plug on something is saying that you just need to roll with the punches. She rolls with the punches. This phrase means that despite difficulties, you just need to keep on trying and just keep working and trying to do what you need to do. Oftentimes when people are speaking a new language, they just need to roll with the punches. This means that even though someone doesn't know a specific word for something, they don't know what a phrase means or Maybe they just feel embarrassed speaking with new people. They need to roll with the punches. Just try to keep speaking despite the difficulties of trying out a new language. 
So it just means, you know, you're a relaxed person if you roll with the punches. You don't get too upset over challenges, difficulties, or things that go wrong. Are you the type of person that rolls with the punches? This just means you're relaxed and you try to keep going even when things get hard. Do you want to wrap up the meeting or should we just keep going? Wrap it up! So to wrap up something, it typically means that we are going to stop doing what we're doing, finish what we are doing. Oftentimes, if we're at work and we just need a few more minutes to be complete with all of our work for the day, we'll say, give me just a few minutes and then I'll wrap up. This means I'll be done at this time. If you want to tell someone that they have a time limit to finish something, you can tell them, hey, you have five minutes and then you have to wrap it up. This means you have to be done with your task or your meeting or whatever it might be. So to wrap up something means to be finished with something. Sometimes people on social media try to play up their lifestyle to make it look more luxurious or fancy than it actually is. To play up something, it means you are trying to make something seem more important or better than it actually is, or you're just trying to show the importance even though, you know, it's not actually that important. So for instance, people on social media, especially influencers, they will rent really fancy cars. They'll show the nicest room of their house just to try to play up the amount of money that they have. So you can actually not be rich, but you can make it look on social media like you're very wealthy and very rich. You're just playing up your wealth. You can also play up emotions. So maybe, you know, something made you kind of sad, but you start crying really loudly and you say, oh, my life is over. You're playing up the sadness. Maybe you're just being very dramatic, trying to get some sympathy from other people. Or maybe you play up an illness. Maybe you are a little sick, so you tell your boss at work that you can't work that day, but you were just kind of playing up your sickness. You really needed a day off. I think this is a common thing that happens. Hopefully not a lot, but once in a while. So the phrase to turn up, it was a really popular slang phrase. I think people still use it once in a while. It means you're kind of turning up the energy. Are we going to turn up today? That means are we going to have a really fun time, probably go out to the bars or go out to a party and drink and have fun. Are we going to turn up? Obviously, we use the phrase of verb to turn up just to mean to increase the intensity of something. Can you turn up the volume? Hey, can you turn up the music? That means can you make it louder? Can you turn up the air? That means you are hot in the house that has air conditioning and you want there to be more air conditioning. Now, interestingly enough, sometimes people say, can you turn up the temperature instead of saying, can you turn up the air? Typically, if someone says, can you turn up the air? It means, can you make it colder in the house? Or if they say, can you turn up the temperature? It means, can you make it hotter in the house. This is where it gets a little confusing even to native English speakers. So turning up something means increasing the intensity of it. Turned up. An idiom that you should know is to take a stab at something. Okay, let me take a stab at this one. If you take a stab at something, it means you're going to try something even though you are very inexperienced. Again, we go back to that example of making a food for the first time. Maybe you've never made a recipe, but you'll take a stab at it. That means you're going to try it, even though it might not be good. And typically, we use this phrase to take a stab at something to mean that we will not feel too sad or too disappointed if it doesn't work out. The next phrase, if you are trying to come up with a plan for something, but you're not taking a really, really long time in planning it, you might say, all right, let's just take this plan and run with it. That means let's try it. Let's try to execute the plan. Let's try to do this. Maybe it is something as simple as you and a friend are planning on going out to dinner and then going to a concert on Friday night. And you can say, let's meet at your house. We'll go to dinner and then we'll take a taxi to the concert. We'll just run with this plan. This means we're just going to try it. It should work out just by planning it very simply like this. Personally, I think it's very important to think ahead. And you're not thinking ahead. This phrase, to think ahead, it means that you need to consider your future or plan for your future. Oftentimes, people will think ahead to retirement in the United States. 
This means they have to start saving money now so that when they are unable to work, they have a lot of money saved and they have invested a lot of money so they can just live on that money for the rest of their lives. This kind of system is different in every country, but it's important to think ahead in the United States if you are living and working here. You can also use this phrase, think ahead, just to mean you're going to think ahead to next week, just trying to plan out what's going to happen. So you can use the phrase to think ahead for any amount of time in the future that you're going to plan for. Maybe you're planning your next birthday and you can say, I'm already thinking ahead to next year to plan out my birthday party. A really common phrase that you're going to hear in English to give a guess on the amount of time that something takes or the amount of money that something costs is the phrase give or take. So maybe someone asks you, how much did that watch cost? And you say, eh, about $100, give or take. Or they'll say, how much time did it take you to clean your house? You'll say, oh, probably about two hours, give or take. This means that you are just giving a guess. You could add a couple minutes, you could give a couple minutes, or you could take a couple minutes away. So this is the common way that this phrase to give or take is used when talking about a guess for money or a guess for time. In today's economy, a lot of people have to cut back on their spending. Cut back on everything. To cut back on something means to reduce the amount of it. So to cut back on spending is a really common phrase that means they need to spend less money. They re need to reduce the amount of money that they spend. And of course, you know, everyone can always do that, but it seems like today everything is so expensive so we need to cut back. Or we could say that we are using a lot of gas in our car and it's costing us a lot of money. We could say, we need to cut back on the amount that we're driving. This just means we need to reduce it. If you feel like you are eating a lot of unhealthy or junk food, you can say, I really need to cut back on my junk food. That means you need to reduce the amount of unhealthy or junk food that you're eating. Congratulations on finishing this English lesson. If you want to study more with me, check out englishwithkayla.com. You can purchase my upgrade to native English course that will teach you more phrases just like the ones that we learned today. I have so many videos that will teach you advanced vocabulary, so let's level up your speaking together. Try out one of the next lessons that are going to be on screen. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!